Welcome back everyone. Happy Friday. Hope you're having a great day. Sorry about the audio quality today. It is pretty windy, but in order to keep my promise of weekly uploads, I have to film today. And today we are outside because we're doing our first, my first ever experiment video. But don't worry, it's not gonna be one of those useless predictable ones involving uh, oobleck, uh, molten salt, molten metal, vacuum chamber, uh, hydraulic press, or liquid uh, nitrogen or dry ice. A few weeks ago, I showed you how to make an awesome paper airplane design, and I built a couple out of thick poster board producing some pretty large planes. They flew pretty well, and I wondered how would they do with some model rocket motors strapped to them. But store-bought ones are pretty expensive at about $4 each, so we're here today to find out whether homemade sugar rockets can perform as well or better. I made these homemade rocket motors from scratch, including the tubes, to match the dimensions of the store-bought C60 motors. They have the same diameter and they'll have the same hole size when I drill it, and I even made sure to match the amount of propellant as shown on the specification chart. The chart also shows a maximum thrust output of 3.4 pounds or 1.54 kilos, so our 2 kilogram maximum scale should be good for this experiment. This block is made out of balsa wood so that it's as light as possible, and everything together weighs about 72 grams. With a total possible weight of 1.61 kilograms, our scale theoretically won't be overloaded. Instead of just burning the engines, I figured we might as well see what effect the flames would have on something like a finger where we get too close to it as it burned. I don't want third degree burns though, so we'll be using a hot dog to simulate it. In order to hold it, we'll need a fire spit, so last week I built one from scratch and brought you along pretty much the entire creative process behind it. I'll put a card for that up here somewhere. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a concise tutorial for this, because currently I'm not planning on making one. After assembling and adjusting the spit to a good height, we're pretty much ready to start testing. Although I'm going to quickly attach some aluminum foil to our balsa block to protect it from hot dog juices, and I'll also tape it to the scale. Alright, ignition begins in three. This is, by the way, this is the uh, store-bought one. Okay, so three, two, one. All right, so um, that was interesting. <laughs> it's pretty intense. I, oh, it didn't even have the freaking scale on. Oh, that makes me mad. But anyway, that's what it looks like on this side. The thing got blown off. Uh, I can't believe I didn't have the freaking scale on. All right, had to switch to my phone because a $300 wireless audio system I just bought is faulty or something. Um, Anyway, yeah, so now we have the scale on for sure, and uh, we've raised up the hot dog a little bit and changed the angle of camera too. All right, so here we go. This is another store-bought engine. Hopefully we'll get the output this time on camera. And three, two, one. Due to the monumental amount of problems I was having on the day I filmed and the lack of time to wait for better filming conditions, I wasn't really able to get a great shot of the scale during this test. But we can still slow down the footage and see the maximum weight detected by the scale. It measured about 999 grams, meaning that the engine put out about 925 grams of thrust at its peak, at least according to this mediocre method of measuring thrust. However, this explosion from the engine reaching the end of its fuel looks pretty neat on camera. So I believe this is the one that just happened. It's actually still cool to the touch because I guess all the, the juices in the hot dog are just keeping it from, uh, from getting really hot. But I mean, if this was your finger, you don't have all those juices on the outside. So I would definitely call that a third degree burn. This was the first one we did. It was closer. This is uh, the recent one, a little bit farther. That's insane how it just blows the thing. It's completely off. That's pretty big. Uh, it's not an ejection charge, but I guess, let me see here. Let me grab an engine. I guess once the rocket uh, fuel runs out, there's no cap, there's no like plug like there is on this end. So once it runs out, it just kind of um, goes the route of less pressure, which means it just goes poof, right out, when it reaches the end of the gunpowder or the uh, rocket fuel anyway. So yeah, that was interesting. 
Also, this is exactly why I didn't glue this last layer of balsa onto it, onto the uh, rest of the block, because I wanted to see how much of an impact that sort of um, ending blast would make on our balsa block. And after two, two tests, I'm the store bought one. You can see it, it made quite a good dent in it. I mean, I don't know if you can see it well on the camera, but because of the time of day and everything, um, but yeah, I made a little crater in our, ball, in our balsa. That's pretty awesome. And then you can just see like, oh, that's crazy. Must be like some of the uh, rocket fuel kind of uh, split off or like came out of the other end and just burnt holes in the balsa. Interesting. All right, let's move on to the homemade engines now. Hello, Mr. B. Anyway. All right, test one in the homemade uh, engine. We have a brand new wiener on the spit and we should be good to go. I'm hoping it actually works. All right, three, two, one. Oh my gosh, let me zoom out a bit. That was quite a long burn time. That must have been like three or four times as long as the store-bought one. But the output was really underwhelming. And is it actually warm? Nah, well, it's actually a little warm right there. Wow, that, oh man, that would do a lot more damage to your finger than the, um, than the store-bought one. However, this is just over time. The other one gets a lot hotter, I'm sure. But yeah, that, that just seemed really underwhelming. So I wanted to point out how the sugar kind of like, I don't know what this is. It's some kind of byproduct of the combustion process, but um, it's cool how it's like a, like a little, uh, I don't know. Just um, kind of looks like the fumes coming out of a rocket, like when it's flying. Anyway, the clay plug held up really well, the homemade clay thing. And as you can see, this one wasn't really that thick at all. So the fact that it held up is pretty neat. And it looks like we did have complete combustion of the rocket fuel, so that's good. I just don't know why it was so weak, but uh, I figured since it burned for so long, it might be a perfect thing to roast a marshmallow with. So let's try that out. Let's get the scale on. All right, here we go with the final test of the rocket engines for the night. Oh, also, by the way, I'm using a much trigger, bigger drill bit on this engine. Uh, I, dr I drilled the hole bigger, so hopefully we can get it to ignite, and hopefully it does put out a higher output maximum. More thrust, that is. Okay. All right, let's go. Um, well, folks, I don't, uh, I don't think this is a good way to roast a marshmallow. That looks really disturbing. Oh, uh, wow. Well, this side's intact, but it didn't really get a thorough roast. It was more of just a, a burn, an intense burn to this side of it. Hmm, smells pretty good. Sort of. Kind of smells like beef stew. Interesting. Um, but yeah. It's still pretty, pretty normal on this side. It's just a really quick but strong burn, so wouldn't recommend it to roast a marshmallow with. This experiment seemed to show that the homemade rockets were incredibly weak compared to the store-bought ones. 
I was super confused about the results because I even baked my potassium nitrate right before I made the motors in order to dehydrate it. My best guess was that the chemical was too old and therefore not very reactive. But I think I realized the real reason behind the underwhelming performance earlier when I rewatched a video on how to make the engines. Apparently, I was supposed to drill the hole all the way to the back of the clay plug and not just a few millimeters into the fuel portion. I'm pretty sure that means that instead of a normal engine burn, it burned from end to end like a fuse. This would definitely explain why the motor was so weak and took so long to burn out. Anyway, sorry again about the bad audio and overall quality of this video. I had a plethora of issues yesterday when I filmed this, such as high winds messing up the filming, a faulty wireless microphone system that I spent $300 on, and my vehicle not working out of the blue, just to name a few of them. I've been struggling enormously to meet my quota of an upload every Friday, even though I've been avoiding the larger project videos. With my full-time job plus YouTube work, I've been putting in around 80 hours a week and it still isn't enough. I might have to reduce my upload schedule to every two weeks, but I'd really rather not do that, so I'll keep trying my best for another while. All I ask is that you guys please don't give up on me and stick with me as I attempt to grow and eventually replace my job with YouTube. Then I'll be able to deliver the quality content and awesome projects that I want to upload every week. Any support by liking or sharing my videos is immensely appreciated. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.